I had taken the warning seriously. We had prepared, we'd bought a gas stove and we'd bought a generator and I'd filled the bath. And we were joking around, like, oh, did you tie down your furniture? And I'm like, no, I didn't. Maybe I should, should I? Last time I was in the bed. The trees were the main concern because it was so, so crazy, the wind. And then power went out and we were like, oh, okay, that's cozy and put some candle lights. I looked for torches. So about 10 past 10, my um, friend, she basically said, shit, my house is flooding. And I think that was kind of the start. I didn't think for a second that what was coming was going to happen. There's like a river under my house, and it was like, oh shit. I saw the water coming down our steps like a waterfall. I went out with no shoes and just my undies and a raincoat, and then started digging. And then all of a sudden, you could just hear the slip start and it was just rumbling down the hill and that's when we like looked to each other and it was just like go 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 through the toilet window i saw there was a lots of people running I was like i didn't want it to be nosy but i was like something's happening we now they'd have a look and just greeted with um carnage across the street eh? and completely flattened house across the road it's just kind of like a holy shit <laughs> moment. And while we were watching, and there was a lot of commotion happening, another house came down with a lot of noise. It was just the sound of thunderous shaking and and I've just seen silhouettes just rubbing past the, the window and all the glass was cracking and thinking, like, this might be it. It was the fear in my friend's faces that you knew that whatever he had seen, you wouldn't want to go back to and that you just wanted to get the hell out of the area, really. We went outside, it was filthy dark and just wet as and um, four other little cabins completely smoked to smithereens. You know, the big tree mashed through the door and from out the other side sort of thing, five metres away from where I was sleeping. They, the firefighters started telling us, you better evacuate. And then we were like, okay, maybe we have to get out of here ourselves. At that point, we really just grabbed the kids and left. Went into the pantry and pulled out my, my cash, and as I was climbing out the window, I looked down, and the right was my um, my guitar. So I grabbed the guitar, and that was it. I was out the window. And um, yeah, I was just pumped to be not in that pile of rubble. The worst part of it was when we were told, you've got to hurry. And my husband said to them, my wife is in bed. You go and tell her to get out of bed right now. <laughs> what we escaped with that night was a mobile phone, kids' pyjamas, a raincoat, a head torch. And that's basically it from our whole lives. I grabbed two towels, I grabbed my pyjama pants. I was like, but I need an activity while we are evacuated. So I grabbed wood carving tools, a wooden spoon, and I grabbed a very sharp knife. During the night, everyone was very stressed and I was just sitting on the floor and finishing my spoon. So I got the only possession that I had was this wooden spatula, the flipper, yeah. <laughs> The one precious thing that I grabbed was my wedding ring. To me, that was the world. I was like, I need my teddy bear that I've had since my first day of life. And I think what that is, is 
it's consistency because there are so many uncertainties at the moment. Like last night, I woke up and I couldn't get back to sleep <laughs> until I found my teddy bear and I tucked it under my arm and I went back to sleep. Sad but true. <laughs> You buy a house, you get a mortgage. Your house is always inferior. Someone's got a bigger house, someone's got a better view, they're in a better position. And that becomes a thing in your life. You always want more. We do all these things because we think that we want financial security. But actually, the reality is there was absolutely no security. It's now a bit more of a burden than anything else. <laughs> Sometimes I grieve my house. It's almost like a breakup. Someone that you love that you know that you can't be with anymore. So I have thought a lot about what it is to walk away from that and then what it is to regather. One of my biggest fears was that friends and family might not want to live out here anymore. So I thought, what happens if our friends move away? And so far, everybody still wants to live here. So this has just brought us so much closer and made us stronger in the loss. I liked everything about that house, the community, my neighbors the way I spent my time there. But that house was just a very nice place to be. But yeah, I have to be careful not to fall back in the old habits because I can pick up everything exactly how I did it and buy exactly what I had and live my life exactly how I used to live it or just do things different. And I'm trying to be aware that like this is something new I can do. The weirdest thing is looking back at pictures of what was in your house, your everyday possessions. Simple, simple things and just thinking, where are they? How can so many possessions just disappear? Uh, yeah, one minute you've got everything and the next minute it's just gone, just totally gone. But there's no sadness about that. They're just items that I used in a previous life. And I've bought items since and it's not for any joy to me, really. Where I can go for a swim, and the feeling it gives me is just way more than anything you could ever buy. <laughs>